name? Friends and neighbors? Or shall I say this afternoon? Welcome back to the political process here on the channel. I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. Uh, where we left off last time, we were basically deciding to throw our name in the hat for the governorship of Pennsylvania. As you can see here, Lester is not going to run for re-election. We're in our second term as mayor of Pittsburgh, so we are going to go ahead and throw our name in the hat uh, for that governor's spot. Now, we passed some programs, some laws here last year that are now taking effect um, that are going to impact our budget as far as like social programs uh, going into this year. And you remember last episode we said 191 million. We got to remember that number because that's how much we had in the treasury at the start of last year. And we want to make sure that if that number is like really going down or like there or above, then we're doing okay budget wise to keep our deficit where it is for right now. So anyway, just kind of keep that in mind. State law is going into effect. We continue to increase the preschool program threshold. Higher education grants also going up, which is awesome uh, as far as some, um, you know, pretty progressive programs as far as fiscal spending at least national law a gas tax increase a pretty significant one more than a more than 10 cents per gallon interesting temporary assist so uh what's it called tanf i don't know if there's a whatever uh that number goes up and marijuana is now legalized at the national level so that is pretty significant now it's already been legalized in pennsylvania so not a big deal there or at least it's been legalized in pittsburgh i don't know if the governor ever like passed it at the state level but i feel like they did all right so meet with the fire chief nothing to report here they got another new puppy and his name is stanley what happened to barrett he's only like two years old Chief of Police. Everything is running smoothly there. More police and less crime. That's good. Department of Transportation. Nothing has changed there despite our constant tinkering with the budget there. Uh, Department of Corrections. Nothing to report there. Building and housing. That number slowly going down, which is good. And then Parks and Rec doing very well so if we go in here to office and say jobs here it would be the spot that i think we should run for now in reality like let's look at this at face value guys if i run for the house salary is one hundred and seventy-four thousand, and it is a like heavy um what's it called advantage in favor of democrats right now to where like we can actually maybe even get some stuff done i make more money and it's a shorter term so like i'm not necessarily locked into it but at the same time um once you're there it's pretty likely that if you run again you'll get reelected. so i didn't see a senate seat being open We'd be running against somebody that's already in office. Like, if I hit this, do I get to pick which district I want to run for? It was, like, District 17, I thought. Mackenzie, I want to bring you back as my uh, campaign manager. And then we're going to update. We're going to go economic policy. And... Oh, goodness. We are going to try and increase per capita income as our campaign promise we're going to try and reduce crime and remember this is going to be like nationwide kind of stuff so these aren't easy to come through on anymore and then infrastructure we want to emphasize infrastructure again I don't really know why I continue to choose that. 
Um, like, road quality across the country is pretty good. Let's see if we can do this one and figure out how the heck to get it done. All right. So we are running for house. Now, it didn't give me a chance to pick which... Okay, so here. House. It is District 17 that we're running for. And that's the one that I think was vacated. So that's good. Now, you see here, like... Candidate policies across the board, we're still doing pretty well with maybe the exception of military. I don't really know what I say about military that rubs people the wrong way. But whatevs. My wife's in the military. Like, my my wife. Not Dwayne Bunker's wife. But whatever. We've got 100% name recognition. The primary takes place in 18 weeks. Let's go into events. And we're going to do some interviews here. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is go to our staff and train them all up. Let's get everybody trained up so that we're nice and efficient and whatnot. We won't be able to get as much done this week as we will next week, because next week we'll have an extra 10 hours to work with. But let's go into events. We're going to do the Allegheny County Evening News. We'll do one interview. Why did those go down? <laughs> Whatever. All right, so that's that. Now, um, we want to automate. Do we want to automate events? Yeah, that's probably good there. So that that we will do. And then for marketing, we are going to automate marketing as well. We are going to spend 10000 a week. That would be... If we do this for 45 weeks, that's 450,000 bucks we're going to spend. Now, if you remember when we were just like the mayor and doing like those fundraising events or whatever, we were bringing in about 10,000 a week anyway. So now that we're running for a seat in the house, this 10,000 is going to be like chump change. And I'm pretty sure that will be plenty to help us win. So we're going to start with general ads focusing on economic growth across the board. So we'll do that on the radio as well. We will do that uh, by internet. It's just general ad. And then by mail, general economy, economic growth. Yes. And we're going to target everyone. So now basically this is we're going to spend 10,000 bucks. They're going to spread it out evenly across these types of advertisements or whatever. And that, I think, will will be fine. So we're good there as far as those being automated. Now, as far as opponents, Phoebe Staple is 46. Let's look at her profile. It doesn't tell me like what she has done before as far as office. So maybe she's never held office. Actually, let's go here. History. Air Force vet for 24 years. Kudos to you, milady. But I'm still going to whoop you. And then Bernard, 55 years old. Uh, and a psychologist. So we should win the primary just based on the fact that, like, we've been mayor of Pittsburgh. What the heck have these people done from a political standpoint that qualifies them for this job? So they're going to have to prove themselves in that regard. We're going to go ahead and actually let's let's we, you know what those the you know the candidates are announced. Let's go ahead and run a poll. And it's right now it is literally like they don't even know who these people are. So we're going to win the primary unless something crazy happens. And you see here, we're spending 16000 bucks a week on campaign staff salaries, right? Plus the 10000 a week that we're going to spend on, uh, what's it called? Marketing. But even with the competition for the campaign funds, we're still raising seven grand. So, like, we've got plenty of money to get through this. And after the primary... This number will increase significantly. So, let's actually just go ahead. We need to go to our office here. And, yeah, I was going to say, I hope I didn't miss anything that I was supposed to do here. 
we do need to set the budget in the city and look at that that number went up again even though we had a deficit set for the year it still went up by like 40 million so we're in good shape financially in the city of pittsburgh let's go ahead and just do something drastic like this to make everybody happy we're going to come in actually you know what that was probably a little aggressive let's bring it down like 0.2 percent it's still something that helps the police department always wants a lot more money than i can give them but we will continue to creep this up to you know continue to support the men in blue we're going to continue to tell the fire department no you can't have that much and then for parks and rec we'll just leave it so even though it says 183 and this is severely negative i think we'll still be okay there let's submit it boom now we don't need to do a whole lot else budget was accepted or i mean the uh the lower city property tax was accepted we support that it is now going to go into law so that's cool let's go to the campaign and we're going to continue to basically ride a few weeks here just to get a feel for what's going on um Just kind of looking at the summary tabs. Oh, I should be looking at these things and doing some like interviews or whatevs. Week to week, let's do at least one. Go here. And now let's go back to the campaign. We're basically a third of the way through the primary season. Let's do a poll. Let's go boom, boom, boom. We're still a runaway. So, feeling pretty good here. Next turn. Events. We're going to do another interview. We're going to go there. See if there's anything. Uh, let's see here. Office. Nothing. Let's get rid of those just so they don't stay on there. And they immediately pop right back up. Holy moly. All right, campaign, still good. Still good. Still good. All right, now we're in week 12. Let's go ahead and do another pull. Boom, boom. Still at 64%. So Bernard is starting to get a little bit of recognition, but it's still not even really that close. Um, and I like that there's also a race for the Republican seat. So we'll be able to see the turnout of the number of Republicans to have a pretty good feel if we're going to have the edge going into the general election as far as voter turnout. Um and I'll show you what I mean by that whenever the primary goes down. Uh, wait, I forgot to do... Let's do another written interview. Boom. Get on the news. Show people my ugly mug. All right, week 16. Another TV interview. Week 17 one last tv interview and then we will do a final poll still a runaway so we should be good to go here it is week 18 nothing going on there this is primary week so let's go in the primary now when we go here it's going to have whoa, 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 whoa. I want U.S. House District. Well, let's speed this up and go down to District 17. So 
one thing that we want to look at here is when they show the reporting, we want to see the total number of votes for Democrats versus the total number of votes for Republicans. And it looks like it's going to be, well, I might have to do the math at the end. Like, we're going to run away with the Democratic nomination. Um, then we've got to do math to see the total turnout once all the voting is in. So let's just go ahead and skip to the end because we know we're going to win. So 21, 34, call it 43 plus the change rounded up to 44. Wait, it zipped up to the top. I was like, wait a minute. Let's try this again. So 10, 35, 39 plus change, we'll call it 40. And then down here, it's like 19, 28. So not very good Republican turnout, which is good. That means we should do well in the general election because there's just not a lot of voter enthusiasm, apparently, among the Republicans. We'll have to make sure that we, you know, continue to put the effort into our campaign as far as funds. But I think we're in good shape. So now that we can go in here and do another interview and say, yeah, primaries behind us that was the part that we felt pretty confident in and now we need to really get to work and just make sure that we win the overall election i'm kind of bummed that we're not seeing more funds roll in here but it's okay let's go to all the fund so the president is doing a fundraiser heck yeah we'll go i got 1300 bucks and 10 political points for supporting a member of my political party. So that was really a campaign or whatever for the Democrats. And then a rally with State House Representative Gerard Meckler. Sure, we'll do that. Uh, 10 more political points. That's taking up some time or whatever, but that's okay. Now what we really want to do here is go in and run a poll to see where things stand now that we're facing a general election and it's relatively tight compared to the um you know any of the elections that i've been involved with previously so we need to kind of stay diligent here and do some polling on a regular basis to make sure we don't start to slip there so we want to go events Let's keep doing this stuff. Just put in the effort to kind of show face. We will do fundraisers. We will do rallies. Uh, and now we will advance. We're going to do polls every five weeks. And if it starts to look like they're gaining ground, we'll do a like individual, you know, one time expenditure, spend like 50 grand on a television advertisement really you know curb any momentum that they've got so let's go ahead and advance we will go to a rally with the governor continue to get political points and slowly increase voter turnout i guess as well campaign so i kind of like that there's more stuff going on in this aspect see here they are running campaign ads about whether we're pro-choice or pro-life so let's not wait let's go ahead and do a poll they're coming after me both of them so let's look at voter intention and we're actually gaining ground so i think we were at 53 we're now at 55 let's keep an eye on that uh, but i'm happy with what's going on there so far 55 is where we are um, and then we're going to keep doing all those rallies. Let's go ahead. Since there was only one there, let's do an interview and let's go ahead and just run another poll. See if we're still treading water. Okay. We gained ground. So let's just be careful there. We still have a pretty healthy lead in the polls, but we want to make sure that like, if that's where it's going to stay, we're probably going to be a little bit of uh, aggressive and try and increase that cushion 
rather than let it shrink. So we'll keep doing polling every few weeks. Keep doing all the fundraisers and everything. Let's do another poll this week here because they keep running campaign attack ads. So... Uh, let's go here. Conduct a poll. Boom, boom, boom. It's back up to 54. So we're kind of hovering in that general area, which is, that's okay. We just, we, we certainly don't want it to, that gap to close. And you can see here, they continue to run attack ads. That's fine. Like, I'm not going to get into that unless it's like desperation mode and we're certainly nowhere near that they're running more ads i kind of like that they're attacking me that tells me that they're scared that i'm gonna win you know what i mean so we'll just keep doing what we're doing for a little bit and i think we will be all right now as the election gets closer we need to you know really make sure that we stay diligent here so let's do a, a poll here in week 32 so let's do a print interview go here and let's go do a poll boom still at 54 this is what we want, y'all. We want that number to stay pretty much right where it is. Keep doing some interviews and such. Boom. More rallies. More rallies and fundraisers. <laughs> Lots of fundraising when you get to these higher levels, apparently. Campaign. Yep. Another one with the president. El Presidente. Inviting me to some fundraisers. That's pretty cool, right? Do another interview there. See, some of this gets a little bit repetitive, but at the same time, it's like, you know... The only thing that the game could do to spice that up a little bit would be to like have a little bit of imagery to go with it like oh you're a little black tie affair there pulling up in your limo and whatnot but i wonder what they're thinking about adding as they kind of dive into some of those updates that they're getting ready to do all right so week 39 might be a good spot to do another um what you call it let's do a written here let's do a poll and continue to check voter intention we're back up to 55 now what i don't like is how little support i'm getting from republicans but considering that there's you know a house seat on the line it's not super surprising um but i'm still getting some of it and I'm getting more of the Republican vote than they are getting of the Democratic vote. So that's a good sign. So, still in pretty good shape from the looks of things as far as the likelihood of victory. Uh, so we'll just keep going through the motions here until we get to week 44 which point we will do one more poll just in case we need to do one more big time ad let's go ahead and dismiss those get them off the docket all right they want to do a debate sure we will do that and again we're going to advocate for moderate principles and bipartisanship boom Democrats don't necessarily like that, but independents sure do. And that could be the difference when it comes to running for president. 
You got to win that independent vote. All right, so legislation. No, we don't need to do any legislation. There's going to be another, like, written interview or whatever here. Yep, the questionnaire. Sure, do that. Go do this. And now, some of the reason we're not getting as many campaign funds is because we're not spending as many hours doing it because we're going to those rallies. But that's beefing up our political points. Our approval rating is way up. Name recognition is sky high. Like, we're in good shape here. So I kind of like where we're at. Um, it's week 44, so we're going to do one last poll to check voter intention. And it still looks really good here. So let's go ahead and advance. We should win. We're looking at a U.S. House seat in week or in uh, district 17 so we want this number to be hovering around 54 or 55 that's a good start for sure and there it level sets but it should stay around that number right there throughout the rest of the election old justice lopez not a snowball's chance my dude Clayton, you have been a, you know, a noble competitor here, but you're going down like a sweet muffin, my man. And they called it. Dwayne Bunker is going to go to the House. Oh, no. Democrats are losing a ton of seats. This is bad news. Because that means we're not going to be able to get as much done. I did my part, though. I held the seat four democrats but we lost 14 seats in this election and now republicans have the edge let's look here democrats lost one governor seat in senate we lost two seats so we are now the minority in both the house and the senate in the state house we lost three seats to where democrats still hold it but that's, this is bad news here. Democrats are now in the minority, which means, like, at least for my first term, I'm not going to be able to get a whole lot done, unfortunately, because I've got to get Republicans to sign on board. So, oh, uh, Clayton sends me a note of congratulations, and we say thanks. You were a worthy opponent. And now... We don't need to do anything else for campaigning for a while. But I do want to look at protégés. Did anybody else run here? Christopher Hildebrand is a disaster. He hasn't even made it to the city council. We got a school board member, a city council member. Corey, I was kind of hoping... Well, maybe he'll uh, run for my next position. I honestly don't really care all that much about protégés because... I don't know how much they matter, so whatever. Um, let's go ahead now and advance. Let's go to the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yes, that sounds fun. So we're going to be a representative at the federal level from Pennsylvania's 17th District. Which is exciting. So, as you can see, we're at the end of 2030. Now, President Orozco has reached the end of her term and will not be seeking re-election. Um, the presidential campaign will begin with the election being, I guess, it should be at the end of 2030. 2032, right? Anyway. Um, all right. So that's it as far as big notifications on this front. There is a run for mayor, which that should mean like my office. What's the story here? Like when I start this. Okay. So now I'm, I'm a, a congressional representative. 
blah, blah, blah. We, we know all of this stuff, but let's take a look here because we have to select a caucus. Caucuses are basically like within the political spectrum, certain Democrats share like, like a set of values for the most part. And so you have super progressive ones, you have moderate, you have socially conservative. So basically, moderate is just kind of like they're willing to kind of consider both ends of both spectrums, okay? Uh, both fiscally and socially. Progressive is like, we're going to spend lots of money and we're going to be socially extremely liberal as well. And then you've got socially conservative, but fiscally liberal. It's a very small, you know, percentage of the party. We're going to stick with this moderate coalition, mainly because of how much of the party falls into that group. Um, so here, we are willing to, to compromise with Republicans on economic policies, but socially, we're pretty liberal. So fiscally, we're going to be from conservative to liberal, which is okay with me. We want to probably favor the liberal end of this. Um, but like I said, we'll work with Republicans if they're willing to work with us. So boom, we join that coalition. Now, I am apparently still mayor. So like if we go into our profile, it's still showing like under office, I have these meetings with the you know fire chief and everything so i am still the mayor of pittsburgh but basically like there's an election this year and someone's going to take my spot because i'm obviously not running for re-election considering i have responsibilities at the house of representatives so the only other thing that we'll point out here is boom we got that done last year full day kindergarten has passed at the state level I don't know about that idea, but whatever. Gas taxes continue to increase. The accessibility for this temporary assistance for needy families also increases. And then that's pretty much it as far as notes going into 2031. So for Speaker of the House, there's a nomination process. So let's go in here and it says, do you want to run as nominee for Speaker of the House? And answer obviously for me is no now the reality is republicans hold the advantage as like in numbers for the speaker of the house and there's only one person on their side that is running so like they're probably gonna win and then when we look over here we've got very liberal fiscally very liberal socially it says that we agree with 71 percent of their policies even though like I would consider myself more to the liberal liberal side, but here socially conservative does not align with us from what we've selected. So this is the guy he's eerie and sneezy for his traits. I guess you could just go in there and give them certain traits or whatever, like name them, which is interesting. He's got 110,000 political points. We are nowhere near that number. He has been legislative aide, legal analyst, corporate lawyer, city council member for eight years, state representative for two years, and then he's been the U.S. representative for New York District 18 for now 11 terms. He's been Speaker of the House three different times and the House Minority Leader two times. So basically, he was elected as a House representative in 2011. And then since 2019, he's basically been the leader of the Democratic Party at the House of Representatives. So from 2019 consecutively all the way up to 2031. So there's really no reason for us to run against this guy because he's going to hold that seat. Now, when he vacates it, maybe we put our name in the hat. But we're going to say no, and then we're going to submit our nomination for Connor. Boom. It's not even going to be close. Look at that, 205 to 6. So, they will be the Democratic nominee for Speaker of the House. Vote for Speaker of the House. And, obviously, the Republicans are all going to vote for him. 
which man would it be awesome if somebody would go against the game the grain here like i don't like that guy he's a jerk face and i'm not gonna vote for him we'll go ahead and vote for connor just so democrats don't be like dude what the f and it's like he was gonna win anyway why does it matter <laughs> so he's gonna lose anyway so why does it matter it's basically what it comes down to so you might as well throw your vote the democratic way booyah so he lost christian arias is going to be the speaker of the house Connor Emmett will be the House Minority Leader. Now, nomination process for the caucus chair. Um, so this is the moderate caucus or whatever it was that we joined. This guy is liberal and liberal. This guy is very liberal and liberal. We are not going to... Well, let's go here and look at details. Political points, 29,000. And if we look at history, vice chair of the Democratic Coalition... And then, um, chair of the Democratic. So Antonio Jara is probably going to win. Um, how many political points does he have? 25,000. So we're not up there with these guys yet, but we're actually not that far away from being able to run for chair of this caucus, which would be cool. Uh, so we're going to say no. And now we need to throw our vote toward one of these guys. And we're going to say, I guess, Antonio, because he's already the chair and he's clearly going to win. And we agree with him on more of our policies anyway. So he gets our vote. Caucus chair introduction. So now I get to meet old Antonio. Uh, and I'm going to say, I hope we can accomplish great things. Boom. Uh, select committees. So now I get to try and choose committees that I want to be on. So House Appropriations is one of the most important committees. It oversees the appropriations process, which is basically funding. Okay? We set the budget. If I can get on this one, we're going to do it. Because that's a big one to be a part of. Now, that should... Well, okay. So these are exclusive committees. Does that mean like I can't... Oh, okay. If I go like this or whatevs, I think I can only pick one of these. But let's try and see if we can do a bunch and then it'll tell me what I've done wrong whenever we get there. So here like agriculture, education and workforce might be one that we could do. Uh, yeah, let's do that one. Oversight and government reform committee. I don't know that we necessarily want to do that. Judiciary Committee. Let's do Education and Workforce and say continue. Now, you can't have more than two. Select two before continuing. So, okay. Can I go on both Financial Services and Appropriations and get rid of this one? No, we cannot. So, it's got to be one of each. So, boom, boom. And we will be on those committees. Now, we have to select subcommittees. So on the appropriation side, we have to pick which like budget um, area we want to be a part of. So like we're on the appropriations committee for the like the defense. So that's going to be how much are we going to spend on the military? How much are we going to spend on commerce? How much are we going to spend on homeland security? I want to go like if I go here, where is labor health? So this is um, funding to national institutions of health. So that's not what I was thinking that it would be. Social security, unemployment insurance, and education programs. That's not exactly what I was looking, thinking it was going to be. I thought that was going to be more around like the minimum wage and such. So let's get, but that, yeah, that shouldn't affect our budget. So let's say... That's actually probably not that bad of one, to be honest. Because if I am handling stuff under the Department of Labor, I might have a little bit more say-so when it comes to... Um, what's it called? Uh, minimum wage. But I don't think we're going to do much with minimum wage. So let's go down here and do transportation. One of our campaign budgets was around... Um, 
improving congestion, I think, or infrastructure. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go there and say yes. And then on the um, education and workforce side, higher education and workforce, workforce protections. So I could do minimum wage here, but with Republicans in charge, we're not going to get that done, but we're gonna at least try to make some stuff happen along those lines. So let's say, wait, what about ranking member? I can be the ranking member of the workforce protections subcommittee. Heck yeah. Why not? So now we just need to meet with these people. Everything's running smooth at the firehouse. Everything is running smooth as can be in the chief of, in the uh, police. We're still adding more people to the force and decreasing crime, which is good. Why do you look so unhappy there, Vicky? Come on, put a smile on your face. Uh, no changes with regard to infrastructure. Nothing noteworthy there. How about we slowly continue to see homelessness decrease, which is good. And then Parks and Rec doing very well. So um, I feel like we're probably at a good place to stop. We're at the start of our basically last full year as mayor, right? Let's look at where's my profile and we'll go history. So actually I have, I should have, well, next year somebody should start as the new mayor. So um, this is our last full year as mayor, first full year as house representative, um, so, which is cool. So we're, we're doing well. We got all the way to the federal level in, you know, 10 years basically. So it's a good trajectory at the moment. We've got a high approval rating. We're getting stuff done at the you know city level. Got a lot done around Pittsburgh. Did a good job managing the budget. Everybody seems to like me. Why am I wearing a red tie? I should be wearing a blue tie. Rookie move, guys. Anyway, that I think is a good place to stop. So let's call it here. That'll do it for this episode. If you have not done so already, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and we will see y'all next time. Good evening, friends and neighbors. Or shall I say this afternoon?